Hey guys, it's Gia back again with another perfume video. So today's video is all about unexpected compliment getters. Since Valentine's is coming up, um, I thought you guys would be interested in hearing about some perfumes in my collection that are edgy, unique, perfumes that I never expected <laughs> would get so many compliments from men, but nevertheless have gotten a lot of compliments. So um, if you're looking for something other than your Viva La Juicy or Alien or Black Opium or La Via Belle, all these known compliment getters that go around in the fragrance community, if you're looking for something edgier than those, <laughs> um, I have this video for you and you are in the right place. And um, you guys know the drill. Before we start talking, we're gonna hop over and grab a drink and then we can get started. So I got the um, iced brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. You know, I would be curious to know, what is you guys' favorite way to caffeinate? Do you prefer like coffee, tea, energy drinks? Let me know in the comments below. This is like decent, just like, Where's these any semblance of sweetness in here? I don't know what happened with that. Okay, something that I do want to mention before we get further into the video is that these are not fragrances that cut through the sweat and thickness of like a club or a party or something like that. So they're not going to project like that. And um, the kind of people that compliment these perfumes are um, people from my social circles and I am kind of a homebody. <laughs> like, I am rather introverted. I don't go to parties or bars or anything like that. Although, back in college, I w uh, worked um, security <laughs> at parties. So for a year, I would have to go to these parties um, and work security at them. And I did not for the life of me want to go back even though I was getting paid. I was literally being paid to go to college parties and I did not want to be there. <laughs> so um, I am not sure how these perfumes would fare in those environments if you're trying to get attention in those kind of environments. Most of the people that are complimenting these perfumes are people that are probably like mildly outgoing to extremely introverted <laughs> on that scale. Um, people that are either from like the academic or artistic communities because I do research and I do art. So, so, so those are the kinds of people that I meet, and um, those are the kinds of people that um, get to smell my fragrances and compliment my fragrances. So maybe in a sort of club environment, these would not suit you. But if you're looking for a more up close and personal environment, professional environment, arts and academia environment, then these are the fragrances for you. Let's talk about perfumes. <laughs> so. Um, I, you know, I started my collection um, on Jo Malone's. My mom um, used to collect Jo Malone's when I was, like, in middle school. She would, like, give one to me for, like, birthdays or um, different holidays. So I have here three different Jo Malone's, and one of them is actually from my original collection back in freaking eighth grade or something. I think this has been discontinued, but you can still buy it on um, certain websites or other countries. Yeah, oddly enough, I get a lot of compliments from men from Jo Malone's. A lot of people give Jo Malone's a lot of crap for being overpriced or not lasting long enough, but they're very natural smelling, never nauseating, and they do last a long time on me because I like to spray my perfumes on clothes. Um, of course, oils and rollerballs I put on wrists and pressure points. And when I test perfumes for you guys, I put them on wrists because I think it's um, a good way to like test for lasting time because fabrics are sometimes inconsistent. Some fabrics absorb um, perfumes more than other fabrics. With the Jo Malone's, I will do like one spritz on the left side at arm's length and one spritz on the right side on arm's length and it'll like last me at least half the day like back in high school I would wear this this exactly this exact Jo Malone the wild strawberry and parsley um I would spray one on my left one on my right and school is like seven hours or something and at the end of the school day my ex-boyfriend that I was dating at the time would be like Oh, you're wearing that perfume because he really liked the wild strawberry and parsley. Anyways, let me start with one of these 
Jo Malone's. So the first one I want to talk about is wood sage and sea salt. This is my top, top, top compliment getter. Like a black opium, Viva La Juicy, all of those things. They do not match up to this one in terms of getting compliments from men. I don't know why this one does so well, but it does. So wood sage and sea salt is this woody, aquatic, fruity perfume that is, um, it's extremely refined and extremely elegant. It's got this fig note combined with this driftwood in the sea kind of smell. Um, they don't list a fig note, but I smell figs for sure. And um, the dossier dupe of this has a fig note in it. But this is just really, really nice. And it looks like I haven't used a lot, but that's because I went through three of the um, nine mil little ones already. So I basically already went through one of these. <laughs> if you are someone that doesn't really like those sort of in your face, walks into the room and immediately commands attention, huge sillage perfumes, you want something more subtle, more natural, this is the way to go. Also, this is a unisex fragrance too. And um, I know a lot of men that actually wear it and it works really well for them as well. So next thing I want to talk about is um, Tom Ford Jasmine Rouge. This is a spicy jasmine scent. It's classic with a little bit of edginess to it. This is probably the most mature out of all the ones I'm talking about because I feel like a lot of people associate white florals with maturity. Out of the people that I know, I noticed that sort of more introverted, quiet people tend to like the scent more. Um, like really down to earth people, not super outgoing people, because I think this is a very like refined, again, refined classic scent. And maybe those types of people are drawn to this type of scent. Um, next one is again, Jo Malone Mimosa in Cardamom. This is a spicy yellow flower, a little bit soapy, a little bit creamy. Maybe just the slightest bit lactonic. Um, again, subtle, natural. This is much more feminine than the wood sage and sea salt. So it smells very sort of intimate, not a huge sillage. I think it has a longer lasting time than wood sage and sea salt, but it is the sort of scent that smells very intimate and up close and personal, romantic and just pretty. This is just like a beautiful, pretty scent. Um, whereas wood sage and sea salt is a little bit more rugged, if you will. I mean, it's not rugged, but compared to this one, it's a little bit more. Next, we have um, something that I really didn't expect to be a compliment getter um, from the opposite sex, much less so. But um, this is Clean Reserve Amber and Saffron. So Clean is this niche line that is... Um, actually quite affordable as far as niche fragrances go. These run at $98 per sort of 100 mil. Of course, I bought it on sale. I recommend getting it from a discounter. But this is exactly what it says. It's an amber and saffron scent, but it also has what smells to me like orange blossom in it. It's a little bit citrusy, a little bit floral, a little bit warm, and a little bit spicy. It's got all of these scents mixed in, but I'd say it's primarily sort of a uh, spicy floral. This kind of smells like Jo Malone's orange blossom or just like any sort of orange blossom, um, maybe the Diptyque orange blossom one, any sort of sort of classic orange blossom perfume with a sprinkling of saffron and amber in it. It's also like the slightest bit leathery to me for some reason. I would also say this is a unisex perfume as far as stereotypical classifications go. And I can see sort of like a tomboy <laughs> type of girl wearing this. Like, I wear it when I'm in my leather jacket. <laughs> yeah, check it out um, if you're looking for um, a more unisex, um, rough around the edges type of scent. Here's another perfume that I've, like, never heard anybody talk about <laughs> that, for some reason, garners a lot of compliments. This is Maison Lancome Figue and Agroom. I cannot for the life of me remember what Agroom means in um, French. <laughs> This is like a coconutty, slightly lactonic, white floral, and green scent. And oh, and also figgy. It, it, obviously, figgy. <laughs> um, this packaging is just gorgeous. And I mean, I kept it in its box because even the box is like gorgeous. It has these sort of um, relief, sort of etching things in it. And then it's got 
this in the background and it's just I love the Mize Only and Comb um, packaging. It's just so beautiful. It almost kind of reminds me of Soleil Blanc. It's that it's that same scent family as Soleil Blanc. It's a little bit solar, a little bit summery, but also white floral. So if you like Soleil Blanc, I think you'll like this for sure. I would definitely recommend checking this out. Again, unisex as well. And yeah, this for some reason is a compliment getter for me. And last but not least, no, we've got two more. We've got two more. Okay, so um, Wild Strawberry and Parsley. Again, this one's been discontinued, but you can still find it in certain places. Um, this is Wild Strawberry and Parsley. <laughs> now, I've, like I said, I've had this for like a really long time, like maybe longer than a decade. But if you store perfumes in a cool, dark place, they will not go bad. I, go, I literally go and sniff my perfumes like every single night. It smells the same. <laughs> um, and the juice has not changed color for me either. Yeah, I mean, this is a natural sort of, it's not a sweet, sticky strawberry. It's this green, not quite ripe yet strawberry mixed with parsley. So it's a it's a fresh fruit, not a um, juicy sort of um, toothachingly sweet kind of fruit. Maybe if you were standing in these strawberry fields and there were parsley over there, and then the wind blew and you got a breeze of like the whole sort of a whiff of the whole thing um, riding on a breeze. <laughs> yeah, this is um, really elegant set, extremely unique. The last one that is a Short compliment getter for me is actually the dossier dupe of the um, Creed Silver Mountain Water. It's called Musky Green Tea. This is a um, sandalwood, green tea, neroli, pettit grain. Um, it's, it's an extremely smooth um, and immaculate mixture of um, green, floral, creamy, and the slightest sprinkling of like like a spicy smell. The dossier dupe is spot on. If you watch my dossier versus um, Creed head-to-head -head comparison video of this scent of Silver Mountain Water, um, the dossier one lasted the exact same time as the Creed one, but I actually prefer this one because it's a little bit more unisex, a little bit more edgy, because it has like an added sprinkling of spices for some reason. So those are my seven unexpected compliment getters. Um, let me know if you've tried any of these. What are some of your compliment getters? And um, if you want to see another video like this, uh, compliment getting perfumes, please leave a comment and let me know.